is done. Welcome to the December meeting of the BBAA. And we'll start out with the vice president report. Okay. Well, I'm getting ready. Uh, funny story. When I first uh, joined the the uh, not the Rocket Club, the uh, I can't even find where I'm, where I'm supposed to go. Ah! Would you share the screen in Zoom? Yeah, well, I got to find it first. Just one sec. There we go. Okay, now I can do it. Okay. Uh, I'm Jeff Goldstein, the vice president. And um, George has put me in charge of doing all this stuff. And he's almost let me have free reign, but obviously I'm still learning. Uh, this is the calendar for December. We're on the first tomorrow night, two events, math night and sky watch. Plaza Middle School. Plaza Skywatch. Middle School Skywatch, yes. right? And that's with uh, at the planet. I guess it's at the planet. Yeah, it is with Chuck Dibbs at the planet. Chuck Dibbs, yeah. And math night. If you want some more information, you can click on any of these. It's on our club's calendar, and this is the Mathnasium of Great Neck, Great Neck Park, Virginia Beach, and they're lo we're looking for fifteen volunteers. No, those are visitors. I'm sorry, visitors. Where's the volunteers? Two. It says two. We got four people signed up. Okay, that's right. You need two, but I think four's four's already signed up, so we're in good shape on that. But come on out if you haven't been to an event. It is a lot of fun. We go back to the other. Moving right along. Saturday, Sunday at Elizabeth River Park from ten till about what is it? Two o'clock. One o'clock. That was fun. I went last time. Uh, the net following week at nine of the night, the Muse Ghent Market Shops uh, at five o'clock, and the BBAA luncheon at Stripers. I'm not going to be able to make either one of those because I'm going to be out of town. Darn it! I got to go to Florida for my niece's wedding. Uh, we canceled this homeschool op. They wanted to do a a meteor shower. There's a there's a meteor shower here, but I think the moon is in bad position. Corn watch on the 16th. Sky watch at Northwest River Park. Uh, that's always a good event. Lots of people come out, and we show off our telescopes and let them look through it, and they can't believe it. We don't charge them. Following week, corn watch again, and tentative optional. I don't know what that is. I have to look. It's not happening. Oh. I think that's normal night watch. Oh, okay. Yeah. The chip off. Okay. No yeah. Uh, being Christmas normal Eve. Normal night watch, but nobody uh, would want to, unless they want to go out on Christmas Eve. Yeah, why not? Let's 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 plan that. Okay, next month. <laughs> Thursday the 5th. Bah humbug, right? Thursday the 5th, uh, club meeting again here at TC. You know, we got to check with Leah to see if we can have it here. Because sometimes, or or... Do, do you know if classes are going to be in session on the on the fifth fifth of January? You're not sure Here's yet. Start on the ninth. You think the building will be open for us? Can you, uh, send yeah. Can you grease the skids? I forget yeah. who it is. Cindy, I think, right? I have to call Cindy or email Cindy. Okay. So we're going to get that uh, straightened out. It, it's tentatively planned for here, and we'll meet someplace else if it can't be. Corn Watch the 13th of January, Sky Watch the 14th at North, Northwest River Park. Corn Watch again the following week, new moon, new you, night high. New moon, new you, night high. <laughs> okay, let's right. see what that is. They cut it off, I'm sure. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a hike. It's a hike. The new moon hike. So it's going to be nice and dark. Eight o'clock. Suffolk, right? Uh, yeah. Kings Highway, Suffolk. Yeah. Like stargazing through telescopes. That's good. That's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. 
Skywatch Northwestern Park. Uh, where are we here? Oh, I went back to December. That's what happens when I when I move it to the month. Okay, so that's the uh, new moon hike. <laughs> Night watch, twenty first to the twenty second. Um, Astronomy Club one hundred and one. This is going to be at the Chesapeake Kempsville. I'm sorry, the Kempsville Recreational Center. And George is going to do probably similar things that, you, that we talk about today to the general public. They're going to charge him two bucks, I think. I don't know, they were talking about five bucks, but I'm, I'm trying to get them to charge two bucks. So we'll try, try to have some participation out there. I'm planning on going to. Of course, it always goes back to December. Okay. Where am I? Uh, Carrollton Elementary uh, STEM is a STEM program for the, the following day, Garden Stars. So I know George goes to Garden Stars, so we're going to need some volunteers for Carrollton Elementary School STEM program on Thursday. Saturday, yeah, Sunday. To make that. Okay. Saturday, Sunday on the 28th, uh, club meeting again. On in February 2nd. And I'm jumping ahead, but <clears throat> there's an annular eclipse in October 14th, an annular solar eclipse. And that's going to pass through Texas, uh, Rocky Mountains, come down. The last thing it passes through is San Antonio and Corpus Christi, Texas. So I'm planning on doing that in October. Any questions? Okay, Let's put it back to December. Put it back to, well, trying to unshare, stop share. There it is right there. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Oh. All right, next, uh, we don't even have to vote on the secretary report because Jeff is not here. He's not online. Uh, I'm getting either. ready. I know. My motion prepped. He knew you were going to be disappointed. I mean, do you want to say it anyway? I think he posted a week ago. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> not even giving him just that thing. Since Jeff isn't here, though, make sure and look online. I'm sure in about a week we'll have it on the website. You can look at the minutes if you want to see it. All right, we'll just go straight into the treasury report with Rich. You can vote to not do the treasury report, too. Oh, we don't hear, we we could. Don't hear anybody yeah. doing that. Yeah, we could, but we're not going to. So in the month, our balance went down by $72. Um, so strong. So we brought a little in and we had some expenses for the year of uh, the month was just kind of like handouts for meetings. And we bought a new battery for the, the Skywatch sign. Um, so nothing too crazy went on. Um, Purchasing wise, we had two new members join um, this month. Other than that, it was pretty quiet treasure month. The fun starts now because we're into renewal season because everyone knows December 31st is when the dues all expire. So go on PayPal or our website and start renewing your dues. And then probably a week or two, you'll start getting emails from me to renew your dues. And um, that's it. I'm, you're going to start hearing from me, but you don't have to hear from me if you go on forth and pay your dues. So, like I said, not a lot of treasure activity this month. Anybody got any questions? Bring them. Yeah. Yes, I do. What's the status of uh, any money coming from Boardwalk Astronomy or somebody else that owes us money? Yeah, we. Um, there were some emails back and forth from with Chuck. I sent him uh, Chuck Dibbs. We um, submitted the invoices for this past year. He says he's going to try to get us stuff from last year as well. Um, but I, I, ha I haven't received any yet. So we'll have to check back with him. Um, what was the what uh, invoice? Thinking. What's the potential invoice amount? It was $750 for each year. So we Sweet. have two $750 invoices, two $750 invoices that are outstanding at the moment. Wow. Okay. Thank you for doing that. I'm going to see Chuck, what, tomorrow? 
Is that the Ben Ed Plaza? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna be at Plaza. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'll, I'll ask him about it. Ask him what's uh, whoa, well, yeah, where those sit. I'll um, bring a pipe wrench. Okay. Yeah. Because last I said, it, yeah, I submitted everything they asked for, so they, they should have everything they need. Um, Good job. You just Good need job. To check. Good no. job. Thank you, Rich, for doing that. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any uh, financial questions for Rich? All right, moving on along. Uh, oh, yeah. There's an event on December 7th. I don't know if you guys can see it, the handout here, but you can get it from, uh, it was printed out, right? And you posted on social media. Okay. It's on Facebook for Mars is going to be occulted by the moon. And you won't be able to see it here live, but you can look on, there's a video link I put on the page on Facebook, not the group, but the page. And yeah, that's, is there anything else to mention besides that? No, it's kind okay. of closed. But... Yeah, if you want to go visually observe it here, I mean, you, it's going to be closed, but it won't be occulted from our perspective. All right, though, next, uh, Ben, do you have anything for the scholarship report yet? No, I'm just trying to see how the, the funds come back. So hopefully we'll hear get some feedback and please, or I guess I'll hear at the next meeting. So we haven't decided uh, what we're going to do for next year. And, um, and hopefully uh, you're going to make an announcement about tickets for the raffle, which helps the scholarships as well. Yes. I've got, well, I'll bring it up right now since we're talking about the stuff, but uh, I have the Georgia June raffle tickets ordered. They should be in my hand by the time we do the luncheon. So I will hand them out to any officers that are there. And if you want to purchase them, that'll probably be the first point where you can. I don't think I'll have them before tomorrow night for that event. So that's it. Uh, they're already made. There shouldn't be any misspellings like last year on it. So I had people proofread it for me. <laughs> and the telescope, uh, I assembled it to make sure it was working and it was broken. And we had to send it back to Celestron. Oh, man. So, so they're sending us another one. It was the whole reason we got it was because you don't have to collimate it, yeah. and it was out way out. I mean, Saturn was a thin line. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, so I called them up and they were cool about it and everything, and they said, "Well, we'll just send you another one." So I boxed it up and sent it back to them. It's a good thing that you checked that. That would have been pretty embarrassing if you yeah. just handed them the box and here's your prize and it's it's busted. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's got the star sign. It's, uh, I don't, the 130? D, 114, 130? I think it was the 130. 130? I, I think it was a 130, like DZ or something. A it's a refractor. It is a refractor. It, it's about like this. Big 130. It's about five inches. It's nice, really. It's five inches. Yeah. It's nice, and the star signs did work. I mean... You couldn't like it was pointing that part of it work so it, one of the stuff that chuck's posted on the groups io site about it it was once you get your phone in there land up on target it was easy in fact uh rachel here tonight but she bought one uh not the same scope but a different one and had it on the boardwalk event and asked me to show her how to use it and she was like a whiz out there just i mean everything you can see for the boardwalk but it works real well. So for someone new, you definitely want something like that. Let's see if that covers that. Uh, Bruce, Alcor report. You ready? Is this your cup? Uh, good evening. I'm your friendly astronomical league coordinator. Uh, for those of you that haven't heard before, we uh, are part of a network of a large number of clubs, you know, throughout the country. I think the uh, the number of people and is like exceeding two hundred thousand now, and um, we're probably up to eighty or ninety clubs. Anyway, uh, as part of your dues for Back Bay, you get a copy of the Reflector magazine. We uh, have a, a bunch of different observing programs. You can go on the Astronomical League website and learn about those. So um, we have uh, 
a list, a quarterly that comes out at the end of the reflector that lists all of the different observing programs that our members have completed. As of September, we now have no BBA awards, but when the December issue comes out uh, this uh, month, I will be able to hopefully hand out some awards or at least recognize some people in January. So um, is, is Brian Lafitte on in TV land anywhere? No, yes, maybe. Nope. Okay. Um, uh, so George Reynolds sick Brian Lafitte on me through uh, <laughs> Facebook instant messenger. And Brian writes that he recently completed the uh, Beyond Polaris International Observe the Moon Observing Challenge. And he asked me, what do I do? And my, my, my approach to this position, especially during the pandemic, is I don't want to be a logjam to you being recognized and uh, getting your pin. So if you go on the Astronomical League website, if you complete a challenge, an observing program, um, send your paperwork directly. Uh, I, I, I trust all, the, you know, if we're all adults, we're all professionals. And I don't need to review your work. If you're under 18, I will review your work. But I don't see any of those here. So yeah, you're, I think you're y'all are staying. Uh, so anyway, um, I, I again, I just felt during the pandemic that I was slowing things down if I looked at everybody's observing program. Okay, I'm not trying to get out of work. I'm trying to get you to recognize faster. Um, uh, I am trying to lead by example. I'm still slowly plotting through my globular clusters. Program. I have to observe 50 of these damn things. I've only found 25, <clears throat> and I can only do it during the summer. Sagittarius and Scorpio are high enough in the sky for me to do it. So I'm now down to my magnitude nine objects. It's going to take me three years at this rate. Anyway, um, so I uh, am trying to uh, increase my skills in, as an observer by finding 50 globular clusters. There's many other programs. If you would like to see my logs uh, for my efforts to date, I can show it to you before you leave. And lastly, we have um, these plots that uh, Sean already mentioned, one for the transit, I'm sorry, the occultation of Mars this month on December 7th. And also there is a uh, plot that's available on Facebook of how to find different uh, objects in the sky for the month of December. And you can download that in TV land off of Facebook. Okay, thank you. Hey Bruce, we missed you at the Stanton River, River Star, Star Party. Party. Yes, I will be back at the Stanton River Star Party in the spring now that I have a vehicle reliable enough to tow my camper. I bought a new Toyota 4Runner, so I'll see you in the spring. Right. Uh, rest in peace, Nissan Xterra. <laughs> I did just start passing around our roster, so as Jeff's not here, he's going to need everybody's names to do his minutes, so if you don't mind. If you're a member, you don't have to put your email or anything. We already know it, mm -hmm. so don't worry about that. And if you don't want us to contact you, then don't put your email though. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, triple RT report. Um, last I saw, the telescope was up. Since we're a little short on time tonight, I'm not going to cover it too much, but club members have access to this great telescope and you can take astrophotography. Hey, Sean, uh, can I put another plug in too? Sure. Um, and back on the scholarship, or for that matter, the, the organization for any new members or anybody on Zoom that's new, um, donations are tax deductible. So we're coming at the end of the year. So, um, you know, what I don't know your tax bracket is, but we are a non-for-profit organization, 501c3, I believe. So please donate, um, and it goes to a great, great cause. Write it off on your taxes. Don't give it to the IRS, give it to us. <laughs> and that really coincides with what Rich was talking about with the dues. If you don't feel like you uh, come to enough events or do, you don't have time to come to enough events, but you still think we're doing good, a good job building awareness of, for science in the community, then you should still be a member is what it comes down to because there's some members like George here that goes to almost every event. There's thousands of kids every year. Like you can pull down the data from the Night Sky Network where we track like how many people are at an event they estimate. We don't, we're not perfect, but I mean, I think when I told it up for my outreach award, 
it was like 12,000 kids that I had talked to at different events. That's a lot. So every event makes a difference and we're trying. But anyway, let's see, old business. I'm still working on this East Coast Star Party thing at Chapokes. There's nothing, nothing new there. So does anybody else have any other old business though? Yeah. Boardwalk money. Oh, that's what they're just talking about. I'm going to follow up with Chuck tomorrow <laughs> to see. He submitted the invoices. And speaking of the boardwalk, actually, well, I'll bring it up in just a sec once we cover old business. Is there any other old business? Okay, new business, boardwalk. The museum, the Coast Guard Station Museum down there, she uh, messaged me on Facebook yesterday or this morning, I can't remember now, but she said that they're doing the holiday parade down the street there and asked if we wanted to come again. There was uh, three or four of us were out there just a couple of weeks ago for an event and it was good. Doing Skywatch is great. Obviously we should do that. And the Saturday, Sunday at the park is good. But if you want to get to people, you got to go where the people are and they're always on the boardwalk. <laughs> so tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. That's uh, I'm thinking a different one. It's Saturday. Saturday is their holiday parade. And you have to, if you're playing on it, I'm going to put an event on the Night Sky Network with the details that I, she sent me in the notes here, but I'll tell you guys. It's supposed to rain. It is. And if, I'm going to tell her it's weather permitting. We may have someone out there. The forecast doesn't look great. I'll tell you that. They're going to be open from 12 to 8. And after 5 o'clock, you are not going to be able to drive on that road. So if you're going, you got to show up early, drop your gear off. But based on the forecast I saw too, it doesn't look great. I know that. But they want to do a lot more events. So they gave us this short notice, but I foresee that we're going to probably be doing maybe a dozen events with them throughout the year because they're always doing something. And when we were out there, there was probably over 100 people that stopped by and the holiday lights didn't even come down where we were. So, but we still had that many people come and look through the telescopes, which was, we've had three people show up at Saturday, Sunday, and we think that's good. So <laughs> it is definitely worth it, every event on the boardwalk. And they were very lax about uh, the rules because I asked them where they wanted to set up. And she's like, I. I don't, I don't know, maybe just set up on the boardwalk out here. And I was like, well, can I drive it? And she's like, yeah. She's like, if they say something, I'll just say, oh, sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I pulled my car out there, unloaded everything, and it was fine. I mean, obviously, if you do that, make sure you drive slow, put your flashers on, stuff like that. But it was very lax. So not like when we're doing boardwalk astronomy. Is that the event that they're going to have cars drive down the boardwalk? They're they're not, I think they're going to be on the street. On the street. Yeah. Okay. So even though the best area really is the setup on the boardwalk, but I think the parade is actually going to be on the street. Okay. And they're close. Their uh, parade's supposed to end at 25th Street, so they are going to go past it. But I'm sure there'll be plenty of people walking on the boardwalk during this event still. Um, the last uh, new business I had was. I haven't uh, finished, we're playing phone tag with the city of Portsmouth, but they want to do an event with us, start doing regular events because of that egg drop thing we did in Norfolk. The lady's trying to get a hold of me, used to work for the city of Norfolk. She transferred over to the city of Portsmouth and we just haven't been able to connect on the phone, but I'm going to try to follow up with her tomorrow again. And she said they want to do regular events. So you and George know that uh, it's coming. <laughs> And that's uh, the last of the new business that I have. Does anyone else have any new business? Okay. I guess we go into observing reports. Anybody have any observing reports? Hey, no one's getting out there. <laughs> <laughs> I've looked at uh, Jupiter and Saturn recently. I took some photos last night. I was testing my camera out. I want to get it all ready for the Gemini meter shower. Just to get we were out at Bustle Month. 
Memorial, Memorial, Memorial Library last month. Last... Yeah, that was good. I was at the Narrow about three weeks ago, about four months ago, I think. And there were a lot of people out there. It went well. It moved Saturday. I saw that uh, Kent and Mark were observing Mars, and they said it, you could see features on it. Yeah, it's close. Yeah. So I want to get out soon to see that. Yeah. I'm planning on doing that. Well, if nobody has anything else, I mean, we go right into the presentation. I'm trying to move it along because George tells me he needs about an hour for the presentation he's doing. So if you, nobody else has observing reports? I mean, I saw a right felt in Mars and I was coming home from reference to like, this is my naked eyes. Like, no, not a lot of light pollution out there, people. So, yeah. yeah. Very cool. All right, you ready, George? I'm ready. <clears throat> You're up. Hey, I've got a question. How many people are there in attendance? Uh, say 1520. Any new people that are actually looking to buy a telescope? I, no one raised their hand. Shucks. I was hoping that we'd have a crowd because uh, people that I talked to at some of our events said, oh, we're going to come. We're going to come. Especially the ones we were out, saw at the uh, boardwalk that night we were at the uh, rescue place. The I we'd have people that, that are really interested watch. in buying a telescope. It's time of year to get them. I guess they can watch it online. Okay. Yep. Well, for those of you who may not know me, I'm George Reynolds. Uh, I'm a longtime member of the BBAA for the last 22 years. I'm also a solar system ambassador, a volunteer with NASA to tell people about space and space exploration. And uh, I, I just love doing telescope stuff and outreach, especially. So here at Christmas time, <clears throat> People sometimes decide to buy a telescope for a loved one or a friend. Unfortunately, there are some traps and pitfalls that they might fall into because uh, you know, it might end up with the telescope being relegated to the closet or the under the bed and not used. So why is that? Well, for one thing, many folks do not know what to look for in a telescope. And I don't mean what to look at, I mean what to look for in a telescope. So they buy something based on its appearance or its hyped up advertised features or its cheap price. And that telescope may end up in a closet, under a bed or out in the garage until they either throw it away or give it away. When someone asks us, what telescope should I buy? We usually say, don't, don't buy a telescope. Get a pair of binoculars and a planisphere and learn the constellations. That's our standard answer. Sounds counterintuitive, don't buy a telescope. <laughs> we know from long experience that a de department store telescope or a telescope purchased without adequate guidance can turn out to be a hobby killer. If it's too hard to use or too unstable to keep in focus, it'll be a turn off to astronomy and not a turn on. We sometimes call those trash scopes. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. So tonight I'll hit the basics, the bare minimum that you might not need to know. Oh, I did it, oh, hang on. Bare minimum that you need to know before going out or online to buy a telescope for a child or for an adult. Sometimes a, a wife will want to surprise their hus her husband with a telescope for Christmas. And I hope to provide you with the information you'll need. Some of the terms you hear might be unfamiliar. Don't worry about that. Get the gist of it. Take home the handouts that we're going to give you and read them. And uh, if you're watching this online, you'll have to uh, somehow get in touch with me or somebody in the club and we can send you the handouts. If you have any questions, you can call me or text me 
or email me because you're going to get my card with all the information on there. Now, one thing, one word of warning. Due to inflation, some of the prices on your handouts may be incorrect. For instance, the Orion XT6 Dobsonian reflector now costs $200 more than it did just two years ago. Also due to, to supply chain difficulties, any telescope you order now may not get here in time for Christmas. You might get it after Christmas. Orion Telescope and Binocular Company is experiencing such difficulties, shortages. They don't even advertise some of their standard telescopes simply because they're not available at this time. So that being said, let's look at the things to consider in a first telescope for beginning amateur astronomy. Uh, Sean or somebody, please pass out the first handout and let me know when, uh, when it's been passed out. Okay, do you have, there's a lot of reading here. I'm not going to read it all, but I'll hit some of the highlights. If you're thinking about buying a telescope for a child, consider their age. And sometimes age really doesn't matter that much. If it's a, you've got a youngster, a four or five, six year old, like uh, Eddie Paris's uh, grandson, Riley, he started when he was four or five. My granddaughter, Samantha, started with, when she was in sixth grade. Uh, if, if you've got a kid who's really interested in the stars and the planets and, and looking up, uh, doesn't matter their age, they may be ready. On the other hand, you might have a teenager who doesn't really care, so you don't want to uh, waste your money on scope that they're not going to use. How much does a child know? Uh, has the child asked questions? Does she like books and magazines dealing with astronomy? How inventive is the child? Do, does he or she have manual skills or an aptitude for handling mechanical devices? And so forth. And our, one big thing is, are the parents supportive? Uh, you want to support your kid's interest and uh, enthusiasm. Now turn over to the next page. You'll see the Orion SkyQuest XT6 Classic Dobsonian Telescope. This is a great telescope, perhaps the best beginner telescope you can buy. And again, I, as I said, it costs $200 more than it did just a couple of years ago. But it's a good price, uh, comparative, comparatively speaking. And uh, it will last a long time. You can, you can use the six inch job for years and years and years and never outgrow it. Then again, you might get uh, what we call aperture fever and want to upgrade to a bigger scope later on, but you can, can't go wrong with this XT6. Uh, I have a mention there, if you can afford it, get the eight inch version and that's gone up too. It's gone up to about six or $700 or $800, something like that. Okay, pass out. Handout number two, please, the telescope buying guide. Now, these are some of those considerations that you should think about before buying a telescope. Price, size, and ease of use. For something you can afford. Don't go for the snazziest, most high, and I'll, I'll read this because it's pretty important. Don't go for the snazziest, most high-tech bells and whistles telescope. If it's too expensive, you might be afraid to take it out for fear you'll damage it. Or it might be too expensive, you might not buy it in the first place. So buy something that you can afford. Size, look for a telescope that you can handle easily. Size matters. The bigger the telescope, the more you should be able to see with it. But if it's too big and bulky and heavy, you might be unwilling to drag it out and use it. You may sit in your closet or your storeroom and just gather dust. And ease of use. Look for a telescope that is easy to use, especially if it's for a beginner in astronomy. If it's too complicated, 
It won't get used. It'll stay under the bed or in a closet forever. Many so-called beginner telescopes that are sold come with an equatorial mount. And we'll get into mounts a little bit later. But this type of mount requires that it be oriented toward the pole star Polaris whenever it's set up. And then moving it from one object to another may be problematic. So for a beginner, it's easier to use an Altaz mount, which is recommended for a beginner, requires little or no setup, can be e easily moved in two directions, altitude, up and down, azimuth, side to side. <clears throat> Some more considerations. If you get a tripod mounted telescope, you'll need a good sturdy tripod. You can expect to spend almost as much for the tripod as you do for the telescope. If you want a sturdy tripod, uh, so you can keep your telescope steady, some companies sell the sell the scope and the tripod as a as a unit. So be careful and wary about this because sometimes the tripod may be shaky and flimsy, hard to keep your scope on target. A good alternative is the Dobsonian reflector, like that XT6 I showed you a minute ago. Don't go overboard on accessories. Start out just with the basics: a decent telescope, sturdy mount, finder, either a finder scope or a red dot finder and two eyepieces. You don't need more than that to start out. A good uh, rule of thumb is a 30 or a 25 millimeter eyepiece and a 15 or a 10 millimeter eyepiece. You'll also benefit from having a planisphere, a star wheel, a star chart, and a book on beginning astronomy. And we'll see have a list of references later. So the question is, what is the best telescope? The best telescope is the one you will use. Based on the above three criteria, if it's too big or too heavy, or too complicated to set up, or too expensive or delicate, you won't use it. It'll gather dust somewhere and get donated to the thrift store or to the local astronomy club. Do your homework, read reviews, visit your local astronomy club like you're doing, and ask questions. Look through club members' telescopes and see what fits your size and your price tag. Again, ask questions. Consult astronomy magazines, books, and online sites to see what's available. If you see a scope you like before you order it, ask some advice from an experienced astronomy club member, and then follow that advice. So once you get your new telescope, again, when it comes in, consult an experienced astronomer for how to set it up and how to use it. Local the uh, Join the local astronomy club and get active in the club events. As has already been mentioned, we have a lot of events. And the fast track to learning astronomy is to hang out with these people who know their stuff. It's better than just trying to do it on your own and don't be a member, don't be just a joiner, be a member. In fact, the Amateur Astronomers Club has a series of sessions called Astronomy 101 to get you started. This is just a buying guide tonight. Astronomy 101 tells you what to look for, how to look for it, and some details on getting started in beginning astronomy. <clears throat> so correctly used, a good telescope can provide a lifetime of rewarding experiences. Handout number three, please. And this is pretty long too, but uh, again, take this home and read it. Uh, I'll just hit the highlights. <clears throat> if you're just starting out in astronomy, I suggest you attend a local astronomy club meeting like you're doing, and then add to uh, come to some of our public sky watch events, talk to members, look through their telescopes, and you'll find all kinds of, on, on a given Skywatch night at Northwest River Park, we may have 10 or 12 telescopes up and down the line next to the parking lot. So look through all of them, ask questions, and uh, be, be uh, 
you know, don't be afraid to ask questions. Each type of telescope has its advantages and disadvantages, depending on what you want to do with it. If you're already an advanced amateur, uh, chiefly interested in visual astronomy, a good eight inch or 10 inch daub. And like I said, Orion's have currently in the range of 650 to 950, which is up almost a hundred dollars from the last time I checked, but the shipping is free. Um, <clears throat> Different scopes of different sizes and types are good for planetary viewing or deep sky ver observing or even astrophotography. If you're just starting out, I recommend you don't get into astrophotography, not until you learn the night sky and determine what it is you want to look at. You can sink a whole lot of money into photo equipment and there's a steep learning curve for, for astro, astro imaging or astrophotography. So you sometimes get so wrapped up in the technical aspects, you forget to look up and see what's up there. Final recommendation. Oh, wait a minute. Binoculars. I'll talk about binoculars in a few minutes. But you can get a different, a, a decent pair of binoculars at Walmart. A cheap pair of binoculars is better than a cheap telescope any day. The final recommendation for a person interested in amateur astronomy is get a few resources, good resources like the Astronomy Magazine, the Planisphere. A uh, good book that I like is Turn Left at Orion, and two other good books by Terence Dickinson are Night Watch and the Backyard Astronomer's Guide. <clears throat> and here's a picture of what not to get. It's not the brand, it could be any brand. That's, that's a cheap, I mean, you can just, just like. Uh, you'll see in a minute, you can stick your name on anything. That's the hype. Number one, it's advertised magnification, 175, 262, 525 power. That is ridiculous for a small scope. Maximum usable magnification is probably around 150 and very, very seldom will you be even able to use that in this type of cell. Number two, not to get, the overly cheap price, $45. You get what you pay for. It'll be a piece of cheap junk. Number three, it's got a plastic finder scope. Number four, it's got a flimsy tripod and mount. And on the box, there's no indication of any of its specifications except for power <laughs> magnification. There's no indication of its focal length or its aperture, which is important. Okay, next handout. Oh, before we do, uh, before we discuss the next specific telescopes, let's talk about binoculars. And I think I can share the screen if I can. You've got a handout. Yeah, pass out the handout for binoculars. And I think that, yeah, here it is. Yeah, you can read this on your own, but I'll just go over some of the uh, high points. When you see a pair of binoculars, it'll usually say something like eight by 42 or 10 by 50 or seven by 35 or seven by 50 or 12 by 42 or something like that. That first number, the eight and the X, X means magnification, multiplication. 8x means it's 8 power, it magnifies 8 times. 10x means it magnifies 10 times. 7x means it magnifies 7 times. The second number is the objective lens diameter. Here's a pair of binoculars. These are the, this is the objective lens, the lens that faces the sky. And the, the wider the objective lens, the more light it can gather. <clears throat> So that's what the numbers mean. Binoculars for stargazing is where you want to magnify or mac maximize magnification as well as the light gathering ability. So 10 by 42s or 10 by 50s are options to consider. If you go with a higher magnification like 15 power or 20, you'll need a tripod or some kind of a frame to hold the binoculars steady because you can't hold them steady in your hands when they're high power, because it magnifies the movement. Uh, uh, 
we'll see in a minute that uh, the higher the power, the narrower the field of view. So the harder it is to actually find something in the sky. So I like binoculars that have a wide field of view. So let's talk about field of view for a minute. Lower magnification in general is, gives you a wider field of view. Higher magnification is a less, a more narrow field of view. Uh, and then there's a combination, like my favorite binoculars, I'll show you these. These are my Orion 8x42 binoculars. They're eight power and they're called ultra view. They have a wide angle, they're special wide angle uh, lenses. So it, not only is it good magnification, but it's got a wide field of view. You need a wide field of view when you're finding stuff in the, in the sky. Uh, I've got a pair of 10 by 50s and I sometimes use them, but it's hard. And I've got a pair of 12 by 50s, they're 12 power. It's hard to find an object in the sky, even if it's a bright planet or a bright star, because the field of view is so narrow in the sky, all the stars look the same. So field of view is something you want to be uh, worried about or considered. Okay, how to focus your binoculars. This is just, you can read this later, but uh, basically there's a center focusing control. And what you want to do is close your right eye and focus it for your left eye. And then close your left eye and then they use the diopter control to focus it for your right eye because your eyes are often different in uh, what they can see. And so this is just a, a, a brief excerpt of an article on binoculars. Go to that link at the bottom from rei.com and get the whole uh, article and you'll learn a lot more about binoculars if you want to. I got a question from Bruce. Can I ask? Okay. Yeah. Uh, hey, George, uh, can you maybe comment on infinite focus binoculars? I didn't hear that. Can you speak up? You said, can you comment on infinite focus binoculars? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was pretty cut and dry. <laughs> what is an infinite focus binocular? Uh, basically, well, I have a pair that I can adjust. You, you're going to have to come closer if you want to hear it. So, George, I have a nice pair of uh, binoculars just like yours, where you can adjust it with a, a diopter control. But uh, Bausch and Lohm and a couple other manufacturers, they sell some that are perfect for astronomy that are set at infinity that you don't have to focus. So anyway, um, I, oh. I they're pretty easy to use, and you don't have to worry about making the pinpoint, especially if you're a beginner. You just look, and they're all dots. So. Anyway. Very good, very good. I never heard of such a thing, but that sounds like if it's only for astronomy, that would be fine. If you want to use it for both terrestrial and astronomy, right. then you're out of luck. Yeah, if you're looking at stuff in your backyard, you're out of luck. <laughs> okay, getting back to Aaron Quinn. Um, I've got some telescopes to demonstrate. So give me a minute, I'll get, uh, I'm gonna mute this computer and turn on another. Okay. I know George didn't mention in the beginning, but he tested positive for COVID. That's why he's not here. Usually he would do this in the classroom. So bear with us on the tech here. <laughs> I have to load him a webcam so he could. <laughs> okay, here we are. These are cheap telescopes. The red one is a Tasco. The black one is a Celestron. They are identical. They're made by the same company, whoever that is in China. They are both sharing the same faults. Most of them. Let me show you. Okay, this is the Tasco. What you don't want is a shaky 
mount. It shakes like this, it's hard to keep it on your target. Another problem with this one, Tasco, is the eyepieces. Standard astronomy eyepieces are an inch and a quarter in diameter. This is 0.965 inches, less than an inch in diameter. Shaky, shaky, shaky. It's got a plastic finder scope, which also is shaky. It's got a rickety mount. Well, the mount is sort of sturdy, but the, the, the tripod is sturdy, but the mount itself is very unwieldy, very shaky. Okay, over here is a Celestron, identical, same plastic finder scope, same tube, same shaky mount. The only advantage to this one is it's got regular standard inch and a quarter eyepieces. Both of these are 60 millimeter telescopes with a 700 millimeter focal length. I don't recommend either one of these. This one is a Bushnell reflector, about a four inch diameter. It's got a red dot finder. It also has standard inch and a quarter eyepieces. This is not too bad a scope. The mount is sort of different. Let me move it around here. The tripod is sort of flaky. <clears throat> this mount is graduated in degrees for altitude and degrees for azimuth. So if you do orient this toward the north, then you can just dial in your number of degrees. See how, yeah, here we go. This thing is supposed to work. There it goes. It sort of works. It, it, it turns the scope a few degrees at a time. But again, uh, it is a little bit shaky. It's a little more steady than the other two and you might get some use out of it. So um, it's not too bad. Now let's look at some good telescopes. This is my good old standby, my Orion eight, uh, short tube 80, 80 millimeter refractor. Notice the finder scope is solid metal with glass, not plastic lenses. Inch and a quarter eyepiece is standard. And the good thing about this is a solid, solid tripod. You won't move that thing. That is solid. It's not going to move. It doesn't shake. Next up is a tabletop reflector. Orion makes several models. Excuse me. <laughs> Orion makes several models of tabletop reflector. This is one of the bigger ones. This is a six inch. This is Orion Star Blast six in telescope. It's got a six inch diameter. You can see the mirror on the inside. It's also got standard inch and a quarter eyepiece. And on this one, I have mounted two finders, a finder scope and a red dot finder. And I've got this special adapter that I can use that I bought from Orion. This telescope goes up and down in altitude, side to side, in azimuth. So this is an altitude, alt azimuth mount. And then finally is the big one. This is an eight inch Dobsonian reflector. It's actually my granddaughter, Samantha's. She lets me keep it at, her at my house. <clears throat> she doesn't have room for it in her college dorm. Notice. Eight inch, there's a <clears throat> curved mirror at the bottom. The light comes up, bounces off the diagonal mirror, comes out the side, and you've got your inch and a quarter eyepieces. 
And I don't have a finder scope on it, but I do put the finder on it when I use it. Okay, so that's three good telescopes and three not so good telescopes. Three good telescopes and three not so good telescopes. <laughs> and let me mute that again. So now pass out handout number five, please. Handout number five is actually two business cards, mine and the BBAA business card. While we're passing it out, can you make these handouts available uh, either on the Night Sky Network or maybe... Uh, I, I can put them in the, uh, the file section of Groups I.O. Okay. Would that work? Yeah, because so we, can, we can, if somebody asks about it, we can tell them, yeah, the handouts are right here for you. I don't know how to put them on Night Sky Network, but I know how to put them on Groups I.O. Okay, I can do that. Okay, great. Well, okay. I'll do, uh, a zip of all of them, and I'll have it on our website. Because not everybody's on Groups I.O. either. True. And just click it on the website. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, I can do that. I think I know how to do that. Zip it all up, and he'll... If you send me the files, I'll take care of it. Okay. Um, let me share the screen again here. Yeah, this looks, this might look a little familiar. Oh, although it's in April, let's go back to December. This is our calendar in our Back Bay Astro website. In fact, uh, I can share that screen too later. Um, Jeff already went over the, the uh, events for December and January, but I want to show you Astronomy 101 at Kemp's Hill Rec Center, 7 p.m. on the 25th of January. We'll be doing this once a month for the next four or five months. In February, we had to move it from February to the 1st of March. So Astronomy 101, 1st of March here, and Astronomy 101 next session at 7.30 on the 30th of March. So that's session number three. April, Astronomy 101 is on the 25th. So that's session number four. That's all we have scheduled right now, but in case they want more, we can go beyond April. So if you're interested in learning more about astronomy, not just telescopes, but what to look for, uh, how to find things different between galaxies, nebulas, what you need, to, some of the techniques you need. Uh, you'll learn some of those things in those Astronomy 101 sessions. Pass out uh, the last two handouts, please. Seven and eight. What about six? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I skipped one. I skipped the number five, beginner telescopes. Yeah, let's look at that. That's uh, uh, pictures of some Orion telescopes that uh, are good for starting out. Let's go back to that. It's a two page color uh, pictures on both sides. On one side, you've got the Orion Star Blast 4.5 astro reflector. 
That's a little bit smaller than the star blast that I showed you. Though I, the one I've showed you is a six inch. This is a four and a half inch. And then they, they decrease from down from there. The Orion Sky Scanner, 100 millimeter. That's about a four inch, a little bit, a little bit smaller than a four and a half inch. Then there's the Orion Fun Scope, 76 millimeter. That's about a three inch telescope. Again, uh, if it's somebody you're 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 not sure about a kid or something, but you don't want to turn them off to astronomy, this is a decent telescope that they can at least see the moon and the planets and and some objects with it. And then the last item on that page is the FunScope kit, which includes uh, a few extras. I turn to the other page, backside, the Orion Sky Scanner BL135 Dobsonian Reflector in two configurations, kit form with some extras, which include a moon filter and an observer's guide and the planisphere. And the, uh, the other one is just the bare bones Dobsonian Reflector. That's about a five inch five inch reflector. It's a good, it's almost as good as a six inch, not quite. And then there's the Orion Sky Scanner BL-102 tabletop model that the Dobsonian reflector, first two are not tabletop, they stand on the ground, but the last two are the 102 millimeter. One's a kit, which includes a few other additional things, and one's the bare bones telescope. And those are good for starting out at 102 millimeter, that's about a four inch telescope. So these are all decent telescopes to start out for a beginner. Uh, be aware, though, if the person is really interested and, and, and takes this and runs with it, in a year or two or so, they're going to want a bigger telescope. That's what happened to me. I started out with a 90 millimeter refractor. And then I got an eight inch daub, eight inch reflector. And then Orion came out with a 10 inch. I sold my eight inch to buy a 10 inch. And uh, I haven't upgraded since then. Okay. Uh, the last two handouts. They're passed out, they're ready. Okay, all right. Super pass. On my copy here. Okay, number seven is called Avoiding the Trash Scope Trap. And I'm not going to read this because it's quite long, but I will hit some of the high points. Um, like it says here, it's intended for readers who might not feel knowledgeable enough to make a wise purchase for a, of a first time telescope. This tells them what to look out for, what to avoid. Um, a trash scope is also called a hobby killer, something that will be more of a turnoff to astronomy than an incentive. So number one to watch out for is plastic lenses. I showed you the plastic uh, finder scope and plastic uh, star diagonal on the uh, TASCO and the Celestron refractors, you don't want plastic. Inferior coatings on the lenses. Coatings on the lenses, let me show you. Here's a, a lens. Those, there are coatings on those lenses to aid in the refraction with the light coming through and also to avoid internal reflection. So you want good multi-coated lenses. Um, number three, plastic again. Draw tube, focuser, star diagonal components like the Tasco had. Number four, a flimsy, shaky, spindly, jittery mountain tripod. Again, if you have something that you can't keep steady, you try to look at the moon and you won't be able to even find the moon. It'll keep changing, it'll, it'll disappear. You won't be able to keep it on your target. Number five, talks about small aperture refra refractors, which is what those are, 60 millimeters, pretty small. Um, uh, number refractors smaller than 60 millimeter are suspect. You don't want, don't want anything smaller than those ones that I showed you. Those are 60 millimeter, those two refractors. The reflector is about four inch. <clears throat> uh, 
Number eight, we avoid telescopes or binoculars that are priced way low, under $100 or so for scopes or $60 for binoculars. Well, like you can get a decent pair of binoculars for less than $60. And he says, I haven't covered fully binoculars and we already talked about binoculars. Number 10, watch out for splashy garish blurbs marked on telescope boxes and packaging, the ones that claim you'll be able to see things at 500 power, 750 power, that's nonsense. As I told you before, about 150 power is max, and you'll very seldom even go that high with a small telescope. Especially around here with the seeing and the light pollution, 50 to 75 power is probably max. And I might mention, um, how to determine magnification. Uh, this tells you, you divide the focal length of the telescope tube by the focal length of the eyepiece. For instance, this is a 20 millimeter eyepiece. If we had a telescope that has a thousand millimeter focal length, divide a thousand by 20, and you've got 50 power. Now, uh, the next thing he talks about is a Barlow lens. What does a Barlow do? A Barlow doubles the power. In fact, they make 2x Barlows or 3x Barlows. 2x doubles the power, 3x triples the power. This is an example of a Barlow lens that came with one of those cheap telescopes, a 3x Barlow. You know what I would do with this? Throw it away. <laughs> it's junk, totally plastic. And 3X Barlow is more power than you'll ever need. Road toward Ewell Road, then turn left onto Ewell Road. <laughs> the museum may be closed by the time you arrive. That's nice, thank you. <laughs> this is a Celestron Ultima Barlow, totally metal, good quality, 2X Barlow. It multiplies two times. And that's all you'll mostly ever need. What that is, what that means is I tell you to buy two, two eyepieces, a wide field eyepiece for the longer focal length and a medium focal length, like 15 or maybe as, as much as 10. But uh, the longer the focal length, the wider the field of view and the less magnification. Now, if you have a 20 millimeter eyepiece, you put a Barlow in between the eyepiece and the focuser, makes the equivalent of a 10 millimeter eyepiece. It doubles the power and triples the focal length by half. So it's good to have a, a good quality Barlow lens. Okay, the last handout is a little bit long, but I'll mention a few things on it. More newbie advice. It starts out, I, st I admire the tenacity of anyone who's able to work with their cheap 60 millimeter telescope on a rickety mount. If they stick with it, if they have the patience and if they can get past all the problems, uh, they'll learn to put it to good use and it'll help them to buy a better scope in the, in the long run. I highly recommend finding a local astronomy club like the Back Bay Amateur Astronomers, attend some of their meetings like you are, attend some of their our observing events like Sky Watch, Night Watch, and, and uh, Saturday Sunday, and some of our boardwalk astronomy events in the summertime. When you come to our events, ask questions, look through everybody's telescope, uh, good way to find out what you want to buy for yourself is look at other people's telescopes. And if you become a club member, you don't even have to have a telescope. Come out to our events and use OPT, other people's telescopes. Some of us have more than one telescope and I'll be happy to let somebody run one of my telescopes while I'm running another one. So another thing that you can do by doing that is try before you buy. That's what happened to me. I tried uh, 
Dale Carey's 90 millimeter refractor. I liked it. He sold it to me. <laughs> well, you can learn a lot from a club. Hang out with these guys and girls who have lots of experience. Like I say, there's more than a hundred years of experience, hundreds of years of experience in, in the aggregate of our club. And so just pick their brains. You can learn astronomy quickly by hanging around with somebody who knows what they're doing rather than isolating yourself off at home with no help. It's fun that way too. You can motivate each other. A lot of good books. Uh, I started out with two books, Night Watch by Terence Dickinson and Turn Left at Orion by Guy Consul Magno and Dan Davis. Both of those are excellent books. I highly recommend them. I've had them in my library ever since. Uh, Terence Dickinson also wrote The Backyard Astronomer's Guide, which is a comprehensive volume on how to get started in astronomy and what to do even beyond getting started. Good star charts are essential. I highly recommend the Pocket Sky Atlas from uh, Sky and Telescope Publishing. They call it shopatsky.com. They have two versions. The Pocket Sky Atlas is made for fairly big pockets. Then they have, have the Pocket Sky Atlas Jumbo Edition, which will never fit in anybody's pocket. But it's good because it's bigger. And uh, for us, those of us who have old eyes, it's easier to see things that are bigger. Another one I highly recommend is Objects in the Heavens by Peter Biren. It's not just a star chart. It's got sketches of the constellations on one page. And on the opposite page, it's got a whole long list of objects to look for in those constellations. Stars, double stars, galaxies, nebulas, uh, star asterism, star clusters. So highly re recommend that. And a very detailed sky atlas is called Will Tyrion's uh, Sky Atlas 2000.0. And then there's even Uranometria, which is even bigger and, and better, and more expensive. OK, finally, the internet is a good source for learning about astronomy. If you go to the BBAA website, let's see if I can see if I have that on the screen here to share. Hold on. Uh, Yeah, I think this is it. Um, let's see, this is the calendar. The Night Sky Network. Let's go to, oh. There we go. That's a lot of email. <laughs> You're never going to read all that. <laughs> no. There you go. Here's our website. And of course, you can go to our events calendar. But here's getting started in astronomy. Click on that. And there's lots of stuff. Before you buy a telescope, binoculars, choosing a telescope, types of telescope, mounts, go to, shopping, eyepieces, learning the sky, stargazing tips, all kinds of helps for getting started in astronomy. You can also become a member. Go to become a member, tells you the benefits and payment options $23 for a year. It's well worth it. And extras, astronomy links. These are other clubs. VPAS, Richmond Astronomical Society, NOVAC, Rich Roanoke Valley. And we ought to put chaos on here too. Chaos is the Chapel Hill Astronomy and Observing Society. I like their name, chaos. And then there are other links for different things in astronomy. Those are all on our website. 
and you can even get a weather forecast. Now, what we have are clear sky charts. If we want to see what's going on at Northwest River Park, we'll click on that. And the dark blue means it's clear. So you've got cloud cover, transparency, sea, and darkness. And uh, smoke, wind, humidity, and temperature. These are all good things, indicators of how it's going to be when you go out to observe. Well, finally, as I mentioned before, if you order now online or uh, online, telescope might not arrive before Christmas. If you are, if it does, you'll be lucky, uh, but I hope it does. But there are local places you can go there. I don't know if MRO is still in existence. Does anybody know? They are. MRO, uh, co Computers and Astronomy on uh, Great, is it Great Bridge? They you'd have to Google it. They're not on Cedar, Cedar Road. It's on Cedar Road. Oh, they're not on Cedar Road anymore. They oh, moved, they're not. They moved over to like Greenbrier. Okay. Well, Google MRO Computers and Astronomy, and you might be able to find something you're looking for. Uh, and put on your calendar those Kempsville Rec Center dates for Astro 101. And uh, like I said, if you, even if you don't have a telescope, come to our events, join the club, and uh, hang around long enough, and maybe we'll even give you a telescope. <laughs> if at any, if if nothing else, you can use other people's telescopes. So, uh, wish everybody a merry Christmas, uh, happy New Year, and God blesses you, everyone. <laughs> Good job. Thank you, George. Hope you feel better, George. Thank you. I'm feeling better than uh, the COVID test says I am. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I, I think it's a conspiracy. The Chinese want us to keep want to keep us sick. See. There's someone that uh, took your advice already. She's looking to be at binoculars. I see a message here in the chat. About that one. Good, good. All right. Does anybody have anything else to add? I mean, I guess we finished up a few minutes early. All right. Let me get my gavel. Thanks for coming for the, to the December meeting. So why don't you do take... a gavel drop since you're out now? You're just like. I know. Done. Did anybody take attendance? I did. Yeah, we got that. Okay, good. Did, did you get the, uh, get the uh, Zoom attendance as well? Yes, I good. took a photo. Okay, good. Thank you. Quick question about this group IO. Group IO. Um, I I can't seem to post anything in it. Um, if I wanted to, you know, go and ask a question, I don't know whether or not I have access to it, but I cannot post anything. I'm not sure if it's, you know, uh, if, I'm, if, if I have technical issues. Um, anybody have any suggestions on that? I'm looking right now, Sandy. Yeah, it is hard. Like when I posted today. To find where the new topic post is, um, if you want to start a new one, it's there. You just gotta. I I just have uh, groups IO messages come to my mailbox. I don't even go to groups IO itself. I just get the email and answer the emails. Right. So if you want to start a new topic, you have to go to group IO. I believe in and, and start a new topic. When people send you messages. To, and you get in your email, you can just respond to the listserv and it'll go out to everybody in the listserv. I don't, I don't get receive it in my emails. Um, so I'm sure there's something I need to do in order to. Did you um, go to groups.io and um, 
And you, I think you have to register or set up an account. Well, I thought that I had, but um, a couple of weeks ago when I wanted to go to Cornland, I wanted to make sure someone else was there. Uh, so I wasn't there by myself. Yeah. And um, I tried diligently to, to try to post on here and I could not do it. So, um, and then I saw Mel and Mel showed me from his um, cell phone how easy it was for him to do it. And so and I'm not seeing the same thing. So, so I, I'm wondering if, like I said, I have access to it, but I'm really not a member. I actually sent several emails that night when I was looking to post something for Cornland. Um, uh, to make sure I was part of the group um, or registered, but it, they all bounced back to me. So I don't don't know. Um, yeah, there must be something off there because there were I think th there were um, emails on the groups I was even today that were going out. So if you didn't see them, something something's yeah. off. Yeah, I did not. The way we can fix this, Andy, is just email me the email address you used on groups IO. And if I don't see your name on there, I'll mm -hmm. let you know that you got to register. Okay. All right. So um, when, someone, when someone joins, I do have to, they have to approve I don't them. know if I'm the only one because Chuck like assigned me to approve them to post so we don't get spammed on there. So there's okay. a chance that I just missed you, which okay. I'm sorry. No, no worries. I'll just, um, should I just send it to, you know, uh, send it to the president email, or you can send it to my phone number. Okay. Yep, I'll, I'll email you right now. Okay. That sounds good. All right, thank you very much. No problem, I'll take care of it. Okay, all righty, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else got anything? All righty, thanks for coming. Oh. That's it. Okay. <laughs>